I recently researched how many mobile apps exist in this world and I found out that uh, the number is almost 6 million apps. It's like <laughs> mind blowing. But this video is not going to be about applications for mobile devices. We're going to look at Win32 apps and what we can do with those. When I'm used to deploy applications, I'm used to have a lot of logging. That helps me to, to error handle if anything breaks. So the first question that comes to mind is, what kind of applications is available in Microsoft Intune for Windows devices? We have the uh, Windows Store apps, Microsoft 365 apps for Enterprise, Microsoft Edge, we have web links, we have line of business and Win32 apps. So, which of those should we use? If you're familiar with Configuration Manager, you already know about the packages and you know about the applications. In Microsoft Intune, the packages is like the line of business and the applications is like the Win32. The line of business application type is the more simple way of adding a MSI, MSIX or AppV package, but it doesn't uh, support XE files or scripts and parameters. The Win32 app is more sophisticated and can do a lot more intelligence in the way it is working. So before we can proceed with uh, Win32 apps, we need to know what the prerequisites are. The device must either be Azure registered Azure AD joint or hybrid Azure AD joint. The Windows application size cannot exceed 8 gigabyte, or at least it says in the documentation. If and when you use the Win32 app, a so-called Intune management extension are going to be installed on your device. Mostly it's referred to IME. In this demo, I wanna use the PowerShell app deployment toolkit, which is a community tool. So to begin with, we go to the configuration file. We want to make sure that the login goes to the right uh, directions. And here we put it into the Intune management log file location. And that is to be able to gather these log files from the diagnostic, which I'm going to show you in the last bit of this video. The other thing is that we can use the help to see what kind of commands we can put into this PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit framework. Let's open the application or the main PowerShell script and let's make sure that the vendor, the app name, the architecture and who have created the packages inside that as that is logged in the logging. Then we in the installation phase, we add the installation command for a MSI plus a transform file. And we also want to do that for the uninstallation. That sits and our package is ready to be tested. So we've created the application with the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. And before we upload it to Intune, we actually want to test the software. That is best practice and we want to know that the process we created actually works. Before we can start testing our application now wrapped in PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit, we need the Windows Sandbox, which is a clean machine that we can run uh, stuff inside and test the installation process of this script. So I'm not going to show you how to set up Windows Sandbox, but uh, Rudy, a fellow MVP has created a awesome blog post on that and you can see that in the description below. Before we are going to test anything, we need to get another community tool that is able to test our package. This tool is created by Damien and is called Run in Sandbox. Open the folder, add structure, and then you get your right click context menus. Quite impressive, right? Yeah. So we simply right click the file we want to execute on the sandbox. We get a option to add a parameter, but in this case, we don't need it. It's going to deploy our package inside the Windows sandbox. 
and the best thing is that you can revert it back to scratch afterwards. Now we just want to see that the application is actually installed on this device. In my application testing, I also want to do a uninstall of my application in case that I want to upgrade this version of this application or in case that I just entirely want to remove it from my environment. So to test this, I have a paid version of SmartPack Studio. It can test in Windows Sandbox, Windows Hyper-V, VirtualBox and VMware. The SmartPack Studio has context menu as well. I right click and press Smart Tester and then I can choose the sandbox out of box and go directly to the installation page. Now, the thing I like about this software is that you have some sort of progress what's happening inside the Windows sandbox. And when you use the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit, it also tracks the log files so you can actually see what happens without going into the Windows sandbox. The other good reason to use this tool is to have the uninstall method that also verifies that you're able to uninstall the software. I believe that's a basic test on every automated package for a central deployment system. We're going to wrap it into a Intune WIN file for us to upload it into Intune. For that, I'm going to use a tool again provided by Damien. I mean, this guy is really just a PowerShell wizard. I'll post a link to this tool here in the description. You'll just start the Intune Win, create and extract XE, and you are presented with a UI. Here we are going to browse to our installation source where our PSADT is located. And as you can see, we can select which package is going to be executed inside. It's not that important. We can change that afterwards. And then we need to simply uh, tell the tool where to put that Intune Win file. And that's it. Now we are ready to implement this into Microsoft Intune. I'm going to head to endpoint.microsoft.com and I'm going to apps, windows, and at here I'm going to choose the Win32. I'm going to select a package to upload. I choose the intune.win file I just created. In the name, just give it the name you want it to be presented with. In the description, if you are helpful for the user and especially if you are doing a available app, then you should add some text that helps your users to understand what kind of software is, is available for them to install. And on the description page, there's a lot of help so that you can make some, some good informational text that also looks quite nice. Add a publisher and lastly select a logo. Selecting a logo is actually very important because our brain is better at recognizing a icon than it is to recognize a name. I usually go to Google and I just, oh sorry, I go to Bing and I Bing the picture and then I just grab a copy of that and put it into the Intune portal. Then we insert the installation command, the uninstallation command, and we wanna install this with the system behavior. Select an architecture for your minimum of supported Win32 app, and also a minimum operating system. It's not required to put in other information on this page, but it can be helpful. So we need a detection rule, and obviously, this Win32 app is going to ask the system if this application exists before trying to install it. Now, if it's not installed, it will install the application and afterwards it will run the rule again. Because we are working with Windows Installer or MSI, we are going to add the product code of that. And for adding the product code or getting the product code, I'm using the Smart Package Studio editor, uh, which is very easy just to copy the product code to the clipboard and then put it into the detection rule. We have no dependencies and we have no apps to supersede. On our assignments, we are able to add all users and please be aware that all users and a required installation that can be dangerous. 
I am in my test environment so I can do this without hurting anyone or have to clean up a lot of stuff. I use filters with the Win32 app so I can manage which devices are going to have this application. And then finally we are finished. Now that process was maybe a little manual and if you are creating a lot of applications that can be very tough. And for that, Nikolai Anderson has created a awesome PowerShell library that we are going to look at. This script is automatically downloading the latest Google Chrome Enterprise MSI. It will put it into a Intune Win file and it will upload it into Intune. And the whole process is automated. Now I'm just gonna sync my device and hopefully I get my application. After some time, the application is installed and ready on the device. If we are going to troubleshoot something and the application wasn't working as expected on a particular device, as you can see here, um, together with the Intune management extension logs, we have here a very thorough log of what have happened on the device while this application was installing. Because it was a MSI, we get the MSI log as well. How can I do this when the device is not reachable? The, the user is sitting from home. So recently we were giving a diagnostic option in Microsoft Intune where we can get the diagnostic of 50 areas or more and you can download that directly from the Intune portal. Once you click the diagnostic button, Intune will send a signal that the client should start gathering data. Once this data is ready, it will zip it and upload it to a storage. Your device that you need diagnostics from need to be online, of course. So when I go into the zip file that I just download it from Intune and look into the diagnostic you can see there's numbers from 1 to 51. How am I going to see what is what? For that we go into the Microsoft Docs which have the numbers and what is documented inside of these folders. So in order to go into the Intune management extension logs it says that we should go into the folder called 40. We can see it, so we can do advanced debugging. Just like in the old days on a domain device, here we are giving the tools just with a little tip and trick. I believe you are familiar with Training, and Adam and Steve and the other guys, I just love the show. And I saw a video on the Win32 app. Steven says that if you send up garbage, it's gonna send garbage back out. And there you have it. You need to test your stuff you need to be prepared before you do your upload into Intune. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. I'll get you more tips and tricks on how to handle Microsoft Intune. And please give the people with the tool I just shown you a huge applause. They are doing a huge work for the community and for us to use and make our everyday even more simple.